Welcome to Creating the Ideal Math Binder for a Math Class with Mr. Hodges. This short video will show you exactly how to set up your math binder so you are set up for success, prepared to be organized, and can get the best grade possible in this class. The first step is getting the binder. Make sure it's a three ring binder. I recommend a heavy duty binder one with a sleeve in the front where you can slide a cover page in. The one shown is a two inch binder. You would probably be okay with a one and a half inch or even a one inch. Just remember you might have to take everything out and make room at semester break, which is fine as long as you don't throw anything away. Make a good cover page for it. Make sure you put your name on the cover page in a large font. And I recommend leaving a phone number or an email address in case you lose it. The person hopefully that finds it will want to get it back to you. Organization in this class will be the key. The object is to be able to quickly get to anything requested within your binder. So keep things organized and label everything you put in there. Here's a sample cover page, but you can design it however you wish. So you should have five sections in your binder and they're listed here. Notes or handouts, number two homework, number three quizzes, number four challenge problems or other, and number five tests. We'll go through each of these in a moment, but remember you can have additional sections if you want. Just put them after section five. We'll go through each one now. In front of all the sections, put any class procedures or handouts you're given at the beginning of the year, grading scale and such. As seen here, I'll give you all of these at the beginning of the class and the beginning of the year, and you can keep them here for easy reference. Make sure to put an index in the front of your binder, especially for notebook checks. If you do anything different, I'll still be able to find everything easily. So let's start with section one, notes and handouts. This section should contain all of your notes. Make sure you always label your notes at the top of your page each day with the date and the section we are on. The idea is you should be able to quickly flip to the correct section of notes if asked. If I were to ask, hey, let me see your notes for section 8.3 or your handouts, you should be able to quickly flip to it because everything is in order and labeled. Section two pretty obviously should contain all of your homework. Again, label all your homework every day with the date and the section we're on. Again, the idea is you should be able to quickly flip to any section of previous homework that you've done for easy reference. Make sure your homework's always done in pencil and never in pen. And I recommend using graph paper for all of your homework, even if you're not graphing. It's a great way to keep your problems aligned, easy, if there's graphs involved too. Always work vertically, always leave lots of space. Neat work always reduces errors. See the recommended graphing paper on this slide. You don't have to use this kind, but it's very simple to use. You can get it at your local college bookstore usually. San Diego State has it, or you can order it online. It's called an engineer's computation pad, but any graph paper will do. Section three is for quizzes. The idea is that, again, you should be able to quickly flip to the correct quiz if asked. So, Label your quizzes and put them in order in this section. The next section is for challenge problems or other types of standardized testing review we may do in class. Just use this to put any handouts we may do or other types of projects we may do in class. The fifth and last section is tests. It should contain, of course, all your tests. And again, the idea is to stay organized and easily be able to find the tests. Remember, if there's ever a grade conflict, if you think you got a different grade than is recorded in the gradebook, this will easily allow you to pull out the test and show me the grade so I can make any corrections if I goofed. There are many reasons to keep your work in order aside from just the fact that organization and neatness is proven to improve understanding and performance as well as retention. Keep in mind there will also be notebook checks. If you're ever allowed to use your notes or your homework on tests, you'll want to be able to quickly get to the information so you don't waste any test time that you're given. And also, I'm human. Hopefully I won't make many errors, but if I do record your grade wrong in the gradebook, all you have to do is show me the actual one I returned to you, and I of course will fix it. If you were unorganized or you didn't have a place to put it or you couldn't find it, I'd have to assume that the grade that I entered in the gradebook was correct. So please keep things organized and help me help you. Here's a quick shopping list if you need one to bring to the store with you. Take a quick screen capture and you can take it with you on your phone. And that, my friends, is how you can set yourself up for success and have a great start to the year in Mr. Hodge's math class.